look at this place. I know, what a unique school, it's brand new. This is incredible. Very environmentally conscious. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Kaplan. I am the K-7 Math Science Coordinator here at the Hosmer School in Watertown, Massachusetts, and this is our new building. Beautiful. I mean, it's, it's really an exceptional school. Want to take a look? Yeah, let's go sure. take a tour around. So you can see everything in this building was intentionally designed for student use. These open lockers are really cool. Thank you, they are amazing. So our building is LEED Gold Certified. What does that mean? LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and it means we use less energy than we produce. So how are you producing energy here? Through solar panels. <laughs> nice. I did notice the parking lot was all solar panels. Yeah, and they're all over the roof as well. Very cool. I'm so happy you emailed us. What exactly do you need our help with? Well, as a part of our commitment to reducing waste, we are composting as a school. And we're not only composting our kitchen scraps and our lunch scraps, but we're also composting in the garden. Nice. Let's go to a classroom. I'll show you more. I'd love to see it. So this is our fifth grade classroom. Good morning, guys. Hey guys. Hi. So nice to see you. Everyone, this is Jen. She's a landscape contractor. And this is Nathan. He's Hi, guys. A Hi, Nathan. Hi, Jen. So our fifth graders are learning about composting and how nutrients are broken down and released into the soil. So every grade level in our school has, makes a contribution to the garden. They all plant something. They harvest. Some of our vegetables are served in a cafeteria. And families take care of it in the summer. Nice. What a great community building project you do with your families too. So who knows about composting? Because there's a couple things you need to know. We need to have the greens and we need to have the browns, right? Who knows what uh, something green that you put in compost? Uma. Grass clippings. Yes, grass clippings. Anything green like grass, any leaves from trees or shrubs or perennials, those could all go in as green. Now, the other question is, what is something brown to put in? Anybody have any idea? Daniela. Um, dried sticks or brown leaves. Yes, so you need the brown leaves and sticks, like anything from fallen trees, any kind of broken, anything that's crispy outside, that's gonna be your brown, your carbon, okay? Um, so, but when we put the two together, who knows the ratio of green to brown? Aventika. Uh, so the three brown parts and one green part. Correct. So three parts brown, one part green. So you get all your, your leaves and your sticks, all the brown stuff. Like in the fall when you're raking up your leaves, you could layer them. So do three parts brown and then you go one part green. You gather anything green leaves and you could just do layers and layers. And, add, and then your compost pile is going to start to cook. Mm -hmm. So And then what's going to happen when it starts cooking? What does it turn into? You guys are so smart. And so that compost that comes out of the greens and browns that have been broken down, we're gonna feed the plants. It's a very nutrient rich compost soil that will go to the roots. It's gonna make stronger flowers. It's gonna have stronger fruits. And the overall health of the plant, it's gonna be more disease resistant as well. And the other thing composting does that we talk about is it reduce our waste. So a lot of trash goes into landfills and if we're composting we're putting much less trash out there so let's let the worms do their job mm -hmm. okay <laughs> yeah so i want to show you the garden and we're going to make you guys a composting bin ready to get started yep so here we have our new school gardens that we're just getting started with wow what a great outdoor classroom this is beautiful i love the layout so does each raise planter represent something for a class or how do you guys work it? Yeah, I mean, every class plants something out here. For example, the second graders just planted these radishes and you can see they're coming up. We also have some husk cherries and here we have tomatoes that we've been planting. We're gonna plant some chive and up at the top, we have our plot for our three sisters garden. And it's corns, beans, and squash. And they're crops that have been planted by indigenous people for millennia. Wow, very cool. Very cool. I love it. So in order to incorporate composting into our school garden program and into our curriculum, we need a bin. Okay. Right, and so most towns require bins. Some towns do pick up on curbside. Mm -hmm. Some towns you could hire services, but it, essentially everyone is gonna have to be composting and this is a great way to start. Yeah, this is our earth machine where we put some of our food waste in. So no meat or no bones or no dairy. Okay. Our school-wide composting, um, the company that picks up will take care of that. But we need a bin for our yard waste. Okay. I think Nathan might be able to help out with where that. Do you, where do you want to put this? I was thinking over here. 
All right, this looks like a great spot. Yeah. But what size are you thinking? You fill up the area? Yeah, something that would kind of fit in this corner. Okay. Well, that's about, it's about six feet from here to the end of the tape. We do something six feet wide. That's four feet there, about four feet deep. Design-wise, I think it works. Yeah. You know, you have the whole perimeter. You can go all the way around, access from all sides, and whatever type, kind of top you're going to do, it would be nice to access. Yeah, I think so. And for, for the height, maybe 36 inches. We'll keep it a little bit lower for the kids. That's Make great. it easier for them to work in it. Mm -hmm. um, for material, I bought some 2 by 6 cedar. Great. So I think that'll blend in well with the shed and the fence. Let's get some tools out and get started. Great. I like it. All right. Hey, Nathan. Hey. Glad to see you're working on a design for me. I got a little something. Yep, a couple things. I like to use a, a rot resistant yeah. material such as cedar like this. Absolutely. I think it's a great idea. And then having sides and a top is also very important because that's going to help the compost cook. Yep. And then having a removable slat or like a, a door to just access the compost, I think is a great idea. So I, what have you come up with? I think we can do that all with this design. For the front, I'm going to sandwich some material together. I'm going to take some two by six cedar, add a rip to the middle. And then what I can do is create a little channel for these removable panels to come in and out so they can get access to the bottom. Nice. In the rear, some simple four by four posts. Um, for a top, I'm going to do a sheet of plywood cut in half and I'm going to put a piano hinge on it. So if they're working in one bay, they can flip the lid off, work, and then flip it back when they're done. That's a great idea because two different, two different timings with the compost piles. Exactly. Excellent. So I think it's going to work out really good. I think we're ready to start cutting. Can I help? Yeah. Okay. Help. To get started, I want to cut the two by six boards that will make up the sandwiched front post. I'll cut the two pieces at 39 inches. Then I'll rip another piece at two and a half inches wide to act as the slot to receive the slats. So we'll drop that first side piece on. Once the posts are all cut to size, we can start assembling the frame. This one here. All right, grab one of those four by four posts. I got some half inch cutoffs so if you want to bring those over. We'll put these between every course. So if you want to toss me a long back piece. Okay. I love your spacers. Like them? Now we can make the slats for the front. Jen, why don't you cut the pieces to 29 inches while I work on the dividers? While you're at it, why don't you stand down the edge of each board? That'll help it slide down the post easier. For the center divider, I'm going to attach a nailing cleat, run one by six cedar boards up the middle, and then cap it off on the other side. Finally, we can work on the top of the bin. I'll cut the plywood with my track saw, keeping the dimensions slightly oversized so it fits nicely over the bin. We'll attach this piano hinge to connect the two pieces on top of the bin to make it easy to open and close. Love it. Oh, hi again. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What do you guys think? It's amazing. Oh, it's it's awesome. really big. You like it? You want to see a inside a bin? Well, <laughs> check this bin go. out. So you can put the lid back and forth, and when you guys want to get inside and work, you just lift these panels out in the front so you can get all the way down to the bottom when you need to and put them back. Right? It's clever. So you could get to it. All these are stationary, but those are the only ones that move. This is so great. Thank you so much. We, we do have one more favor to ask. We have some scraps from our lunch and from yard waste. Could you help them get started with their compost pile? Start christen it. Right. Right. Start it. Browns, please. Just going to sprinkle it in. Then we can spread it out. Oh, nice. Good clippings in there. Green yeah. committing. Now we're ready for some greens. Perfect. Throw them all yeah. in. Oh, good job. All right, so now that we're done, we can slide those boards back in. I can help. Don't, don't pinch your hands. I think you guys are good to go for the season. Thank you, Thank you guys. You're all done. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.